Hey, what's up guys? My name is Aaron. Welcome to my channel. I've had the opportunity to try the Galaxy S23 Ultra and the S23 Plus. And here I am, ready to give my first hands-on impressions, including something that I did not expect with the S23 Plus. More on that in just a bit, but first, even though they pack a slew of improvements over the previous models, if I'm being honest, just holding the phones in my hand, both the S23 Ultra and the S23 Plus don't look or feel very different from last gen. For example, for the S23 Ultra, it's that same Note inspired design, same screen size, same S Pen, but maybe it's a little lighter with the screen, having a flatter edge on the bezel, but aside from that, it's easy to mistake it for the S22 Ultra. That being said, there are a few major upgrades such as a tougher Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2 screen, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor, which supports ray tracing for certain games, and up to 40% faster performance than the S22 Ultra. It also comes with improved image stabilization. Samsung says the S23 Ultra has two times wider OIS than the S22 Ultra, so it's easier to get a crisp, sharp picture even when zoomed in. And of course, that 200 megapixel rear camera sensor. Now, 200 megapixels is a lot, but do you really need that many pixels? Well, if you ask anybody who shoots professionally in any capacity, they'll say that having that many pixels isn't necessary unless you're shooting for large canvases, something big to hang in a gallery. Then you want that ability to blow up images without losing resolution. That's the standard answer, but it wouldn't really apply to the S23 Ultra because although we have a 200 megapixel count, it's actually 200 megapixels with four times pixel binning. So it's kind of like combining four 50 megapixel images together, creating one 200 megapixel image. It does that because pixel binning 50 megapixels into 200 megapixel images quadruples the amount of light the camera is able to capture, resulting in better low light performance. However, it's important to note that it doesn't shoot 200 megapixels by default, you'll actually have to activate it in the S23 Ultra. And looking at this test shot at 200 megapixels, it's able to resolve fine details in the subject's skin, and colors do appear natural. If you zoom into the shot, you can see that the results are quite good, the creases on his shirt look crisp. It's only when you blow up the picture around 30 times that it becomes fuzzy, which is still quite impressive given that the picture is zoomed in that much. But judging from that shot alone, it seems like that sensor does capture sharp images with a reasonably good amount of detail. Now, even just shooting casually in its default settings, I noticed that the S23 Ultra's improved Neural Processing Unit, or NPU, is pretty good at resolving the image after the shot. Zooming in 10 times, 30 times, even 100 times, the S23 Ultra is quite capable of resolving the image so that the pictures look sharp and clean. And for videos, it does look pretty good too. Even at 30 times zoom, it's well stabilized, although you can sort of see it struggling to clean up the fuzz in darker areas of the shot. The on-air sign itself looks clean and sharp. Overall, it does seem like a big upgrade over the S22 Ultra. Of course, as soon as I get a review unit, I'm gonna head outside, shoot some dark scenes with the S23 Ultra so that we can analyze its low light performance compared to other phones. I'm also gonna talk about other areas of its performance, so if you don't wanna miss out on that video, get subscribed and tap the bell button to stay notified for more content from me. The S23 Plus has a bigger battery. 
than the previous model, around 200 milliamp hours more. Also, the base plate of the rear cameras is gone, but it doesn't mean that there's no camera bump. It's still there, and comparing them side by side with the S22 Plus, they both look quite similar in terms of thickness or weight. Since I did bring my S22 Plus to the hands-on session, I was able to compare their cameras side by side. And, well, I did not expect the results. Shooting the same picture side by side on the same settings, they seem quite comparable at first. The newer S23 Plus seems to have the upper hand in terms of color accuracy as in it looks more true to life. But the S22 Plus seems to resolve zoom shots better. Here you can see this signage in the background looking cleaner on the S22 Plus compared to the S23. I wish I was able to compare them more in depth, but there simply was too little time and we weren't able to bring the phones outside. So. Once I get some review units in, do expect another S23 Plus video to follow with an in-depth comparison between the S23 Plus and the S22 Plus. To stay notified of upcoming reviews, get subscribed and tap the bell button to stay notified for new videos. For a small channel like mine, it will really help a lot if you subscribe. Thanks for watching, smash like and share. If you enjoyed this video, I'm also on Discord, so if you have Discord, come and join the chat, link is in the description. It's a vibrant and growing community, and it'd be really great to have you on board. By the way guys, I've also made a video about my dream desk setup of 2023. If that's the kind of content that you're interested in, click on this video over here.